Domo Arigato, Mr. Roboto. That's right, it's time for another Top 100. Welcome back to 9to5Gamers, and today is the next video in our Top 100 series. If you have not watched those videos, go back and watch those videos because they are awesome, full of so many games that you could s shake a stick at. Is that the... Why, why are we shaking sticks? I don't even remember. Anyways, thank you guys for tuning in. Um, we just want to go through the next list of our Top 100. We are going through the 40s today, but if you have not liked this video, please like it. It helps with the algorithm, and also, in the comment section, let me know what you think of these games. Any of these games uh, made it into your Top 100. Let me know in the comments section and as always if you'd like to support the channel subscribe It's free doesn't cost you anything and you'll be along for the journey of the nine to five gamers channel Which is two years in the making now But without further ado if you want to support the channel a little bit further don't forget to check out memberships We have memberships available on patreon ko-fi and also here on YouTube You could become a member here and every little bit of money that you guys can subscribe to the channel and and become a member It helps this channel out tremendously we appreciate all of our patreon members our ko-fi members and all of our youtube members shout out to y'all Y'all already know because I'd be sending you guys pictures of what I'm doing all the time and also of all the new games that I get. So there's some cool perks of being a member, so go check that out and go over there and suggest some videos you guys would like to see. Without further ado, let's get into this list. Number 50, the reason why I said Domo Arigato Mr. Roboto is because we're talking about Bot Factory. Bot Factory is literally Kanban EV but easy, right? It's not an easy game to play, but it's so much simpler than Kanban EV. It is by Vidal Lacerda, but it's made by another person, which I, it is made by Joe, Joe, I can't pronounce that. Quintela Martin, Mar, Martinez, Martins? By Martins and Vidal So I'm not exactly sure how much of everything everybody did, but it does bear a, a, a lot and a passing resemblance to Kanban EV. It's basically the same thing except that you're working for a toy factory that makes little robot toys and you're just assembling little robot toys and Sandra who transferred from Kanban EV, she's the manager that's always checking in on your work and kind of does bad stuff. She is in this game and she's blocking up spots and doing her usual bit which is awesome. And this game is great man. I think this is a, a perfect entry level way to build your way up to Vital Lacerda's Kanban EV having played both which but Kanban's not going to make this list. Unfortunately, I didn't play it in enough time, and I'm not redoing this top 100 because this literally takes days to finish these these comparisons. But I will say that if I were to choose between the two, I'd probably play Bot Factory anyway, just because it's a lot simpler. And Kanban, it just gives me a headache. But anyways, it's a great game. They're both really, really good. But I love Bot Factory. Simple game, very easy to learn how to play it, and you'll enjoy playing it. My number 49. Marvel Champions the card game. This game has fallen from grace. Like it has Twilight Zone Tower of Terror dropped from being in my top 10 for a long time to now being in the 50s. And the reason why is because I actually sold this game. I no longer own this game. And the reason why is because it just got so bloated with content. Now, one thing you will not hear me saying, and I hope you don't interpret this as that, when I sell a game, it doesn't mean it's a bad game. It just means it's a game that I'm not gonna get to the table often enough. It is a game that I would never play with three or four players. It is a game that I would only play with by myself or with one other person. That one other person being my wife. My wife hates this game. So she will not play it. I played by myself, exhausted every single villain, every single hero, up until like a certain point when they got to the X-Men and that's where I cut it. But there's not, it's not like the X-Men is gonna produce anything that's gonna make me go, oh, I'm getting back into this. This is so good. It's not. It's just the same stuff over and over and over again, but there's a lot of complexity with the card building experience, which I love. I love deck building, not in the sense where it's like a, it's not a deck builder. It's a deck construction deck where it, it game where you're just, constructing your deck beforehand and you're making a deck of like what like 40 cards and it's really really fun and the way that you play cards it's a card game where you play cards from your hand in order to play them you have to pay the cost of it which is in the top left corner if it has a three you got to get rid of three cards from your hand to play the one card that you're playing and so you have to it's like a hand management and the resources you need to pay cart with cards uh, to pay cards with is in your hand and uh, you just battle bosses it's it's I will tell you this with the core box alone you've got a a lot of gameplay there and then you could buy a couple of like heroes and a couple of like villains and stuff like that and make the game expand a lot there's a lot of more keywords I would highly recommend that if you're gonna jump into the game 
jump into the core box and then add on content as it was released because there's a lot of issues with power creep where if you go straight for like the x-men stuff there's going to be keywords in there that you don't remember because they did they came out a long time ago and things like that i would say do it in the order that they came out and uh, and then eventually get to the ones you want um, but if you want to buy hero packs i think you can buy those however you want but like i said the cards get stronger over time and it makes it so that some of the newer things are just so much better than the older people that you don't play the older people as much so i would recommend Go in order. If you don't want to do that, do it however you want. But it's a good game. Next up is my number 48, and that is Jerusalem Anno Domini. Now, this game is fantastic. This is a game about the Last Supper, and you're just trying to... You're a follower of Jesus, and you're trying to get to the Last Supper just to be around him or his apostles. And so it's like a little worker placement game, but then you've got these in order to get go visit an apostle, you have to get like certain cards in order. So when you play the cards out, you're playing them out in a specific order to visit certain apostles. And then when you do that, you gain points and you're allowed to put your workers into the Last Supper. And the closer they are to Jesus, the more points that they score. And some of the apostles have like little abilities for the people that are scoring around them. You can use those abilities to bump other people out of their seats and take their seats, which I'm like, who does that? What kind of Christian does that? <laughs> but it, it's a fun game. Like, it's really cool. I don't think you have to be religious to enjoy this game. I think that's a an addition to it. I think if you are religious and you are a Christian, you would probably enjoy this game a little more than the average person. But I think it's a solid a worker placement game with some cool mechanics. And I think that it, it's another really good game from Devere. Guys, keep your eyes on Devere, man. They are making some great games. When it comes to all the games they've released, Devere has been amazing over the last couple of years. So that is my number 48. Number 47, Tribes of the Wind. Underrated. I will tell you right now, this is one of the most underrated games. I love this game. The way that I could probably describe it is like Hanabi, where the backs of your cards have like something on it that your opponents can see, and their cards, the cards you play are based off of what your opponents have, right? So it's like, hey, you will score X amount of points and get this and this and that rewards if you have more water cards than both of your neighbors, right? The person to your left and to your right. And so you're interacting with the back of their cards, but you don't know what the front of their cards say. And the front of their cards have abilities that will let them do certain things if they have you know, less cards than you or more cards than you, or if you have the same amount, it's, it's super cool, man. And then you've got this board with like pollution tokens everywhere and you're trying to clear out the pollution and you're trying to reestablish a whole bunch of like villages and things like that in this forest. So it's such an interesting game. I've never played a game like this. And I, even though like it's similar to Hanabi, it's really not because Hanabi, you just have blank cards. They don't have abilities. You just kind of try to figure it out as you go. And it's cooperative. This one's competitive. And I love this game. I will play try of the wind about any time i get the opportunity to play it because it is that good it's super underrated this is a game you guys got to try number 46 artisans of splendent veil which has also dropped down my list man that is a let me tell you something that's a really good dungeon crawler and it is a how would you describe it it's a dungeon crawler but it's it's cute but at the same time, not. It's 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 interesting. It's a very interesting game. Very ambitious. I love what they did. I, I for just for the simple fact that you're getting a novel and you're actually like reading. I, I'll tell you this right off the bat. This is not like Gloomhaven or any of these other games. The the combat is very simple. It's not super. It's it's all dice related. So if you got the dice, you do the actions. If you don't got the dice, you don't do the actions. All of the differences in what you can do is depending on what equipment you have, how you've built up your character, what you know abilities they have. But yeah, you're reading a book and I will tell you, you need to play this at four, okay? You do not wanna play this at less than four because what happens when you play at four is that everybody has their own novel for their specific asymmetric character basically. And as you're reading, you read the book together and it has dialogue options. So it's like you're, you're listening to the story but everybody's contributing. And there are points in the book where you and other characters, so you and your friend can go off to a corner and explore and find a dead body. And then it's like you both interact and have this moment and you guys read together and you're like, oh snap. But the other players don't know what's going on because you, you're you privately reading this with, with each other. It's pretty interesting, the cool interactions it creates around the table. It's cooperative, it's beautiful, artwork is amazing. There's so much good to be said about this game and the negatives of it are really inconsequential. They're not that bad. Um, I'd say that the combat is just a bit like 
too simple and they take a long time like combat with four people takes forever like and and the thing is that i don't want to do the combat like i try to breeze through the combat just so i can get to the book because that's probably the coolest part about the game is just reading the book next to each other and out loud reading it to one another it's super cool there's a lot of cool stuff there's maps in the book and as you look through the maps there's numbers that correspond to different like secret things and it's like does anybody see the number 405 or am i tripping and then everybody at the table's like i don't have a 405 i don't have a 405 either what's at the 405 jeremy go to the 405 and then everybody's just like freaking out because it's like yo you have something that we don't have in our book something that you can see based off of what your abilities are like some girl can hear you know things well or feel the emotions from different and out and event objects from the people who created them and it's just super cool man really good game there are injuries in the game where if you get injured that injury stays with you and has lingering effects in the next combat and you have to go a few like days before it's fully recovered and then you have a scar after that and then the, you take stickers out for the scars and put them on your characters I'm telling you, man, this is a great game. I think you guys would really, really enjoy it. You got to check it out. That is Artisans of Splendid Vale. Number 45, Concordia. Classic, solid game, bro. Like, I didn't think Concordia would even make it this high up on the list, but when I played it, I was like, this is solid, man. It is an area control game. It is a classic, easy to play. Like, you don't have to, it's not super complicated, but I just love what Concordia does, and I look forward to playing this game a lot more. I haven't played it, like, a ton. I've played it, like, maybe two or three times, but Concordia is great i want to play with like the solo the solo thing i haven't gotten that yet but i would love to get the solo expansion and concordia is just really cool it's like area control fun fun game where you're trying to win like different gods favors and things like that it's fun i i really liked it and uh, i think you guys would too i'm not gonna talk too much about that one that one's classic i think most people have played concordia by now i just finally played it so I'll, I'll skip past that one. Number 43 is Cosmic Encounter. That is, I have the 42nd anniversary edition. I love Cosmic Encounter. I have met a lot of people who don't like Cosmic Encounter. Why do I like it? I like it because it has simple rules and a very easy goal. You have to try to get your little spaceships off of your planet and onto other people's planets. If you can do that and get your ships onto different people's planets, you will win the game that way because every time you do that you're getting points but the thing is that you have to align with people as you're like invading people's planets you have to be like hey come and help me fight this guy and so i can get we can get our planets over here our ufos over here and our spaceships onto their their planets and so people will gang up together now that's the basic premise of the game but the part that makes this game so much fun is that everybody is playing as a secret like alien faction and you have an ability that breaks all of the rules of the game like it doesn't even take into account any of the rules it's just like like I, I we played with one that was like the wife and this alien can marry and like you're this alien that can marry another player and then basically you get all of the stuff that they get and then you can divorce them at any time and take half of their like assets and stuff like it just it's silly it's funny it's hilarious and when the people flip over that got the that alien card and you're like what the heck does that do oh i'm allowed to do this 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 and that it's like yo that's so broken what and then it's like well you know what i can flip mine over and i do this and it's so much fun once all these like alien factions flip over and everybody's powers start to come out it's like bro this I don't even know what's going on anymore and there's so many different ways you can win um, and uh, there's certain factions that you don't flip over until like the very end and then you're like ha, i automatically win it's like what the heck it's like there's fun stuff in this game man and there's so many different alien factions to choose from that i don't feel like this game would ever get stale for me um, but i need to play it more so i love it though cosmic encounter my number 42 caesar's empire bro it, this game is so good man this is i think this is another underrated game because it's just so simple to play simple easy it's not area control it's just more but kind of like you're just building like these little paths out of rome because it's like all roads lead to rome so from rome you're branching out and taking different areas control of them up uh, by putting little uh, these little 
worker things out. And as you're doing that, you're making these trails. And then when you have made a trail, you count back the amount of trails that are yours and that's how many points you gain. And then at the same time, you're collecting these little city th tiles that have victory points printed on them. And as you do that, you're just trying to score the most points. You're also collecting these little tokens I and mean, it's got like a little set collection thing that you're doing. The more different types you have, the more points you'll get. Or if you have all of the tokens of the same type, you'll get a bunch of points. And so you're just trying to do like a little bit of set collection with these tokens, gain a whole bunch of points from taking over different cities and getting points from different paths. And then somebody will have a path of like 10 things. And there's just like every turn they're like, all right, that's 11 points. All right, that's 12 points. And then you're like, okay, somebody cut them off, right? Like, and you have to try to like build little paths to cut them off so that it's easier to, or that your people will be included. So every time they're scoring, your scoring on top of the other scoring that you'll be doing so there's some interesting strategy that goes into it bro i can teach this game in like 30 seconds like it's so it's literally that simple that's a major exaggeration probably be like five minutes or less of a teach but literally it's that simple you're just placing things out and you teach people how you score points and you just say hey look the most important thing you just don't grab the same the same types of city tokens because you're only going to score the highest one so don't go out of your way to try to get you know multiple of the same thing try to branch out and get different ones from across the board that's pretty much it it's easy fun to play love this game caesar's empire is fantastic and my number 41 is a game called orly owns orly owns is a bag builder worker placement euro game it is tan as tan can get i mean it is me tan like it is super tan and it is, a, but it's just a fun game. It's 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 such an interesting way that they've done the worker placement where you're pulling workers out of a bag and they're like little chips. And then when you look at those chips, it's like, okay, this is how many I'm taking. I got a, a pink one, I got a yellow one, a black one, a red one, a white one, right? Like, and those things, you put them in combinations onto your, your little own little player board and take actions based on what workers you pulled out of the bag and so you want to build your bag up with more workers so you could take certain actions there's also like a little area control thing going on on the other board where you can build like little houses and stuff and it's just really really fun man and you just score points and whoever has the most wins it's like it feels like a common euro but the bag building just makes it so much better than a lot of the euros that i've played and i, I just really love orleans i want to play this game a lot more i know they're coming out with some kind of anniversary edition i will buy that in a heartbeat because i just hear all the expansions make this game even better so that's my number 41 that's orleans and that is the end of this list don't forget like this video comment if you haven't subscribe if you haven't and if you haven't become a member go do that that's going to be awesome it's going to help support the channel every dollar helps and remember youtube always takes about 40 percent of that so you give me a dollar i'm getting 60 cents youtube's taking the other 40 i think ko-fi gives me a little bit more money and patreon gives me a little bit a bigger percentage of the money but i don't care however you want to support if youtube is the easiest way to do it do it let's do this and let's make money for this channel so that way we can continue to be supported by wonderful patrons such as yourself we love you guys thank you so much hope you have a nice thanksgiving See you guys later. Peace out.